I'm sorry, I can't, I can't talk about it without crying. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and this is Small Stuff Big Family. This video is a collaboration with some of my favorite YouTube friends um, and it's the thankful tag. So Carissa Shathlin had found a list of 10 questions um, on a website called crossway.org and it's 10 things to ask at your Thanksgiving gathering. So we're using this um, blog post and I'll link that down below as well but we're using it for this like thankful tag so we can answer some of our thanksgiving related questions for you guys but they're also great questions that if you guys want to be able to take those questions to the holidays these are some like meaningful questions that you can ask your friends or family um during the holidays besides carissa who came up with this idea for this video um some other moms that are doing this are valerie santos jenna from Mega Mom, Jenny from Jennifer G Family. I am so excited to be partnering with these ladies. Please make sure that you check out all of their videos. I will leave them in the description box below. And without further ado, let's get into the 10 thankful questions. Question number one is what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? And mine, hands down, is the stuffing. Now I do love pie like <laughs> i love the desserts as well um pecan pie actually my mom makes like a chocolate pecan pie that's absolutely fantastic but i would push that aside if i had to if i could only pick like one thanksgiving food to eat it would be the dressing what's the happiest thanksgiving memory of your childhood i can't remember like one thanksgiving in particular but when my great aunt was alive she passed away like several years ago so she was almost like a grandma to me and they were when we first moved from like springfield missouri up to the st louis area my great aunt um, alma was her name her and her daughter um, my cousin shirley they were the only family that we had in the st louis area so that's who we would get together with for all of the thanksgivings that i can remember um, as a kiddo and then kind of like once my aunt passed away we did Thanksgiving with my cousins for a couple more years but it was kind of one of those things where like once all the kids all my cousins were grown they kind of like moved and like spaced out so we really don't get together with them anymore but I do really miss my great aunt Alma um, being part of cooking and making the Thanksgiving meals so <sighs> yeah that's hard to get through without crying but <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite um, childhood memory. It's just always getting together with all of them. Question number three is what do you enjoy most about the Thanksgiving holiday? I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's the food. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's just like my mom and dad and sister and my family, like, yes, it's great that we're all together, but we're kind of like all together a lot <laughs> throughout the year we're very close and see each other quite often um so yeah i like to see the people in my family but that's like it we don't wait for thanksgiving to see that so i'm gonna have to say like the food is now at this point in my life the one thing that really sets thanksgiving apart from any other like family function or fun th family thing that we do question number four is who is the most consistently grateful person you know the person that is standing out in my mind is um, a friend of mine from high school uh, marcy bursack is her name now that's her married name um, but we were friends in high school and then we kind of like lost touch but yet we stayed friends like over facebook and so we've kind of kept up with each other's lives um, through that and she has always been such a positive like uplifting just like thankful for life type of person she puts off this just like energy of like gratitude and thankfulness and always supporting other people she just recently decided that she was going to write a book about foster care adoption it's called the forgotten adoption option and it was inspired by her own journey of doing foster care adoption for the two beautiful little siblings that she and her husband adopted 
it together. Her whole entire journey of writing this book, I mean, it's just like one post after another that you see on Facebook and in like private messages that she and I have shared where she's just like literally thankful to the point of tears um, always for any even the tiniest little bit of support so I think that it's worth mentioning that here and I will leave her information um, in the description box down below and please share that with anybody that you know that might be going through or considering the foster care adoption journey. Question number five is what's the one experience for which you are most thankful this year? I think the one thing that I'm really most grateful for is a new tradition that we started. At least I hope that it's going to continue the next years, um, even when things do go back to normal. And that's having birthday parties at home, like just inviting like a few, like family is all we did this year but like even in the future like when things go back to normal I hope to still be able to do that. It was really fun for me to like give each of their birthdays like a really like personal touch and like come up with a theme and then do like decor and games and like fun things to do to keep them busy and entertained at the party. So I hope that even when things go back to normal that's a tradition that we can like carry forward is just doing their birthday parties at home because I don't know it was just a blast I think the kids all enjoyed it I liked being able to do it for them I love planning parties it's like one of my top favorite things to do for the kids question number six is what's the one book article or blog post for which you are most thankful this year now I did not read any books and I'm not a big like article or blog post reader. Um, I'm a very visual person so when I'm trying to learn something new I like to like absorb it in video format which is the main reason why I started YouTube because that's how I like to consume my uh, content. I'm just gonna say the main resource um, that I appreciate this year was a training that I took on LinkedIn Learning and it's called Cultivating Cultural Competence and Inclusion. And this, uh, the instructor for this is Mary Frances Winters and she has an organization called the Winters Group and that's mostly what she focuses on is um, like cultural awareness and inclusion of others regardless of their cultural um, choices. And this goes along with question number seven, which is what's the one thing you've learned this year for which you are most thankful? And that was learning about cultural competency and coming to awareness with my own cultural identity because the thing is and what this training explains is that um, we all have our own culture no matter where we are, where we live, where we came from, what religion or political stance we take, whether we're a mom or not, what race we are. And the reason that's so important to know what your cultural identity is and to have awareness of that is that's the only way that you can really start to fully understand and accept other people's cultures. The danger of a stereotype is not that it's untrue, but that it's incomplete. Hmm. I've been asking, clients lately to think about not just the narrative that they hold, but ask themselves the question, does this narrative no longer serve me? What's the source of the narrative? And if the source of the narrative is, say, a living being, is it possible to go back to the source of the narrative and say, not in anger, not in confrontation, but to, to say to the, the source of the narrative, this narrative that I've held for decades, you gave me this narrative, it's harmed me, it's caused me harm. It's definitely um, worth the training if you are if you have LinkedIn Learning. If you don't, um, I'll leave Mary Frances Winters, like the Winters Group um, website because she does have like books and a podcast and a lot of other resources that might help you. If the idea of like cultural competency and being more inclusive with the people in your life instead of like pushing them away, finding ways to include them whether they're like you or not. The sun is starting to come through the window and I have a sun catcher there so I have to like shift so that those rainbows will get off of my face. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed that. You can see them like, yeah, here right here on my hand. So this is the time of day when the sun catcher is coming. 
So question number eight is, if you could think one person today, near or far, living or dead for their influence on your life, who would that person be? And um, I'm going to try not to get emotional, <laughs> but I already feel like just reading that question and thinking about who I was going to say is it's almost getting me there. So I'm going to say my husband's mom, my, um, yep, starting already. So my, um, mother-in-law, because, um, <sighs> she passed away from breast cancer before I could meet her, before I met my husband, but she is the one that gave birth to and raised my husband to be the amazing man that he is um, and she had to have done something right I know that she was an amazing person and um, her family and my stepdaughters um, love her and miss her so much and my husband does too um, and you guys if you saw my I'm sorry I can't I can't talk about it without crying um but And I cannot wait for um, the day when I finally do get to meet her because from everything I've heard about her, um, I'm going to love her <laughs> and she's going to love me too and um, it stinks that I never got to meet her um, but actually if you guys saw my, my how my husband proposed video where we talked about the proposal and everything. Um, one thing that I didn't share in that video just because I didn't want to be like crying <laughs> or like get my husband to cry on camera um but after he proposed and we were like getting ready to leave I asked him if I could have a minute <laughs> if I could have a minute just to sit there by myself um by my mother-in-law's uh grave site because that's where he proposed to me if you missed that video I'm struggling. <laughs> that's where, um, that's where he proposed to me and I asked if I could have a minute just to talk to her by myself and, um, I just said very quietly, like a little prayer, almost like I was praying, because that's the only way I can think of to talk to her, um, and I hope that she could hear me, but I just told her that I was so thankful for her and, um, that she had done such an amazing job and raised such a great man um <laughs> yeah i i would um gladly be able to talk to her and tell her that myself and someday i will so i had to take a minute there so sorry about that <laughs> it's real you guys um question number nine is who's one person you've never thanked for their contribution to your life but would like to and honestly I I sat there like while I was trying to compose myself <laughs> and um think of an answer to this but to be honest like I I feel like I'm a pretty thankful person I just um I've always like I was the type of person that like I went back to my elementary school teachers and my high school teachers like later on in life and went back and told the people that like really had a good influence like my high school track coach my English teacher Mr. Hornbuckle um I wrote him an email like you know way after the fact um like when I was in college and thanked him um because I ended up changing my major to English and it was all because of him um and yeah, like I thank my parents, I thank my husband for the things that he does, I even thank our kids. It's even like in the signature of my work email, <laughs> you guys. It's in my description box down below of every video. I honestly cannot think of one person that I I haven't ever thanked like in my life. So like I just, it's just something that I do all the time. Maybe my mom's parents my grandparents um, because they died when I was so little that I may not have had a chance to really say thank you I can't remember much about them but I know that obviously they did have influence on my life um, 
but I don't know, I might have been too little to ever really say thank you for that. Um, so I don't know, maybe then, but that'll be a conversation we can have someday. Question number 10 is, for what do you feel most grateful to God today? And honest to God, it's just the ability to breathe. Like, just to live on this beautiful earth um, and have the wonderful family that I do and that I'm here. Like, just just for being here. Like, that's that's honestly what I'm most thankful to God for every day. Like, he... He gave me everything that I could ever need um, to be the person that he needs me to be. So that is everything, you guys. Thank you for sticking with me if you stayed to the end, like through the tears and all. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please check out everybody else's video for this thankful tag. Thank you so much, Carissa, for inviting me to do this. And yeah, I hope that you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you before then. And I hope that you have an amazing day today. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.